Hello, we're back with the professor of Daniel French Mathematics, and today we're going to be talking about the second derivative test. Now, with the second derivative test, we're going to be dealing with the relative minimum and relative maximum, which is also considered the local minimum and local maximum. Now, first, we're going to compute f prime of x, and then f double prime of x, which is the first derivative and the second derivative with respect to x. Find all critical numbers of f at which f prime of x is equal to 0. So you're going to find critical numbers at the first derivative. When you find the first derivative, you, find, you solve for x and find those numbers. Then we want to compute f double prime of c for each such critical number c. So here, we see that if f double prime of c is less than 0, then f has a relative maximum at c. Now, if f double prime of c is greater than 0, then f has a relative minimum at c. But of course, if f double prime of c is equal to 0, the test fails, and that is it will be inconclusive. So let's look at these diagrams here as we go up across f prime of c and as we start to go down, we see that f double prime of c, f double prime of c will be less than zero. So that means that this has a relative maximum at x is equal to c. And of course, as we're going down and we start to increase, right, f double prime of c greater than zero greater than zero, that says, that says that f has a relative minimum at x is equal to c. So let's look at an example problem. So as we look at the example problem, we're going to first calculate the relative, the relative uh, extrema, and then, of course, continue on to, uh, to confirm that the relative extremas exist based on second derivative derivative test. So here, determine the relative extremum, which basically is the absolute minimum and absolute maximum of that function. Right? Determine the relative extrema of the function f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x squared minus 24x plus 32, using the second derivative test. Now, we did this problem in class, find the relative minimum and relative maximum. So we're going to go over it again, basically, on this film here. As we recall, we earlier from class, we found that the relative minimum, uh, we found the relative minimum and, and maximum, relative maximum, right, and relative maximum by, by uh, finding uh, first the first derivative, and then we set the first derivative equal to zero, giving us critical numbers x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 4. But let me show you how we did that. So we write the function out and we took its first derivative, which is 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. And then we set that thing equal to what? We set f prime of x equal to 0. And of course we factored this function and then we went on ahead and did what? We uh, solved for x. We set each uh, we set this expression equal to x, and then we factored and we solved for x. And then we came up with x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 4. So find the relative minimum and the relative maximum. We substitute these critical numbers into the what? Into the original function. This part right here, the original function. So as we did that, we came up with what? At f of negative 2, we came up with 60. And that was the relative maximum of, the, of f. And then we said we substituted uh, 4 into the original function, and we came up with negative 48 as the relative minimum. Now, that's our relative extreme. Now, let's confirm the results by using the second derivative test. Based on what? Based on, follow me here, based on this theorem here, based on these rules, right? So, as we go back, let's look at this. We took, we took the function, we found the first derivative, and then we did the second derivative, 
And the second derivative was what? The 6x minus 6. And then we went on ahead and kind of broke it down. Right? Now we substituted negative 2 in the here, right, into this, this expression, into the second derivative. And look what we got. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Now, based on our rules of the second derivative test, we see that here, negative 18, let's look at that, negative 18, make sure we got all our, uh, got all our, got all our I's, cross all our T's and make sure all our negatives are in the right place. So negative 18 we see is less than zero, which implies that f of 2, what we did previously, is equal to 60, had a relative maximum of x there. Maximum of x, right? So as we continue on and we substitute 4 into the second derivative, we see that 6 times 3 is positive 18. We see that 18 is greater than 0, which implies what? That f of 4, which is the relative minimum of negative 48, had at that point a relative minimum of f at that point. So this concludes, this concludes our discussion of the relative minimum and maximum, which we have in this case applied the second derivative test.